What's going on guys? I'm Fiend EOC back again here with my top three books of the week of last week of the uh, week of the 26th I believe it was yeah um pretty good books this week so let's just uh, get right into it number three was Superior Spider-Man 28 uh, this book was pretty good um there's a lot of story progression in this book like um it starts off where uh, the goblins are attacking Spider Island and um, they're just blowing it all to hell and uh, Spider-Man escapes. He makes his way to Parker Industries and um, um, we get some more of we get some more of Peter trying to separate his mind from will separate his memories from Otto's. Um, we get a, a reveal of Jonah's uh, new creations. He's creating uh, Goblin Slayers, where where Mary Jane's kind of skeptical and thinks they're Spider Slayers. Um, we get. Uh, Carly comes back as well as kind of she she has a little uh, battle with Spider-Man and um, and gets uh, I guess gets some sense knocked into her I forget exactly how it happens but somehow she becomes Carly again for a second um, and um, and then it ends, the book ends with someone uh, seemingly getting kidnapped. So, pretty cool. It was a good book. It was, it was definitely a, a good uh, progression, good story progression issue. I really enjoyed it. Next book, uh, the second book of the week. Well, top, top two, I guess. Black Science, number four. Now this book, it didn't feel like much story progression happened, but what did happen was was huge. We kind of just like ended one big sequence that happened in the first three issues and continued into here. We ended a huge action sequence and kind of just reset in another dimension. Because they jumped in this in this issue, it, from the pillar, they jumped to another dimension. So half the book is where they were previously, in this like crazy war. And then the second half of the book, <clears throat> it's a completely different tone. Um, and it's real calm, and they jump to like a seemingly peaceful place. They jump to a city where they can like take showers and and rest and you know. Just hang around without without having the worry of someone killing them. So, um, they before they jump to the to the new dimension they're at, uh, someone gets left behind in the war zone, and yeah, and he kind of gets betrayed. So. If that's any clue to who sabotaged the pillar in the first issue, I, I'd put my money on him. Um, yeah, this was a this is a solid book. Um, I'm definitely gonna be picking this up for a while. All right, the next issue and number one best book of the week, The Wake, number six. This book came back freaking strong, man. It's completely different than the first book. Like how the first book was like a science horror book. Or the first five issues. First part. This part seems like it's going to be just like a future adventure. Not even future. Just like... I don't know. Like dystopian future, maybe. Um, but this book... 
this book turned out um, amazing, actually. Um, like I said, it's a completely different tone. So we get um, this character, uh, Leeward. I think I believe that's her name. Leeward, yeah. Um, she's she's like a. Uh, I forget what the actual monsters are called, but she's like one of the 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 monsters. Um, <clears throat> she like deals in heads illegal head trafficking, I guess, of these monsters. And uh, she trades one of the heads for this radio receiver. And um, so she goes and um, plugs it into her, her, to her radio. And uh, she gets this message of, of like, help help or help me I'm alive down here which is under the water because the world is now completely covered in water it's like help me I'm alive down here and I have uh, the answer of how to how to save the world or something like that that's how the book ends yeah it's it's uh it's really great you get um, you get like this scene where this like uh, government military uh, military kind of place or organization I guess um, they're testing they're testing weapons on the monsters and then um, they send someone out they send some like thugs out some military thugs to go find uh, this girl because she's got the the radio receiver and apparently um, civilians aren't supposed to have aren't supposed to listen to the radio um, I don't know what the government's hiding but um, but I think uh, it has something to do with that message that that they, that we got at the end of the uh, at the end of the issue now I don't know if it's like a, a live recording or a, a live message or a recording because it is 200 years later and the the message is from Dr. Lee Archer, who was the character in the in the first part of this book, and it's two hundred years later. So I don't know how she would still be alive, but uh, I mean, I, who knows? Crazier things have happened. I guess I wouldn't put it past uh, this book f with uh, if she turns out to be alive. But uh, yeah, aside from that, this uh, well, including that. <laughs> This is an excellent book, um, and and also this is even a great uh, it's a good jumping on point. Believe it or not, if you didn't read the first or if you go pick up the first and trade, you'll just you'll enjoy it even more. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Um, I was gonna talk a little bit about that book, Revenge. Real fast, let me grab it. So revenge. This is what this didn't make my top list or anything. But uh, a lot of people have been hating on this book, and for it being like way too gratuitous, I guess. And I can see that, but I'm gonna defend it a little bit. Like with the like, okay, there is excessive like sex in here, but. I, I, I really do see it as being part of the story, okay? For two reasons. One, because the girl is a porn star, okay? I guess, I guess you don't have to be as, you know, I guess you don't have to put, like, spread leg shots like they do. But, um, but that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is because um, it's like it's a sex is a tool for this girl to convince Griffin of uh, to get the transplant. Okay, because Griffin doesn't want to do it, and and while you know while they're having sex, 
is when she's able to convince Griffin to get the transplant to set this whole revenge plot into play. Okay? So I think I think they put that I think they put all those sex scenes in there just to show like how how powerful Candy is over over Griffin to do uh that that he will, that he'll do whatever she wants because she has sex with him and you know he's a 72 year old man and she's like this hot porn star so in that respect i don't think this book is gratuitous but it's definitely over the top i mean you know it's it's crazy um as far as the violence goes well is that it's not really violence yet but as far as the gore goes I mean, it's a Mexican face transplant. You know? What do you expect? It's not going to be, like, sanitary. Alright, guys. I just wanted to defend that book a little bit. I know you... I know you probably don't care. You're going to read it or not read it. But I just wanted to say my two cents. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope you picked up... Uh, Hope you picked up your books this week. Hope you enjoyed them. Hope you guys picked up The Wake number six because it was excellent. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all Wednesday.